Note this video will discuss spoilers for the hit show Game of Thrones and so if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go watch it first. Like honestly, go now. Don't wait, the video will still be here when you're done. Okay, so this miniseries is going to be a slight departure from the usual content on the channel as I was keen to try out something new, which is to apply much of what my usual content covers in popular culture. On that note, I'd love to hear feedback on how you find this video and if you enjoy it, I may look to expand it into its own series on the channel. If you're new to the channel, first of all welcome and I appreciate you taking a look at the video. I'd love to hear your feedback as well and if you enjoyed the video please leave a like, share it and subscribe for more content like this. So back to the video, we fast got the final season of the television phenomenon Game of Thrones approaching us in a few months time. The show's been a tremendous hit since it first aired in 2011 and has gone on to become one of the most successful shows in history and has developed a legion of fans for the series of books it's based on by the author George R. R. Martin. So I'm going to try and do the seemingly impossible and predict who will finally sit upon the Iron Throne at the end of the show based on the characters left and their potential outcomes and personalities. Now, before I begin, it's worth noting that I'm only speaking from a perspective of the show and not the books, as they've both diverged on their individual paths and are likely to reach different conclusions. Today's video will primarily focus on the White Walkers, the Lannisters, their allies and some of the other characters, while the next video will be focusing on the Starks, the Targaryens and other notable characters along with my conclusions on the show's end. So with all that said, let's start out with probably the biggest threat on the show, the White Walkers. The White Walkers are an unknown entity, going from folklore to reality they have been a silent threat throughout the show, with their motives still completely unknown. Now what's interesting to note about the White Walkers and specifically their king, the Night King, their actions seem to show a purpose and a very specific reasoning. They aren't just frozen zombies as they seem to have clear motives and a consciousness when they act and specifically go into battle. This was no more evident than when they fought with Jon Snow and the Brotherhood in Season 7, all but laying them on their deathbed had it not been for Daenerys coming to save them with her dragons. In this moment, the Night King threw a spear to take out one of the dragons, Viserion, to claim it as part of his undead army and possibly one of the greatest threats at his disposal to all of those south of the war. These actions were deliberate done with certainty and have been claimed to have been the tactic to use Jon Snow as bait to draw out Daenerys. It's not known what the Night King's motives are, but what is known is not only is the threat very real, but there are clear and conscious decisions being made by the head of the White Walkers. Therefore, while it's hard to say that the White Walkers won't be overcome, there's a very real possibility that the show ends with the Night King dominating all of Westeros. Next, we move on to the Lannisters of which only Cersei, Jaime and Tyrion are alive. Now I won't specifically discuss Tyrion in this video as he's currently aligned with Daenerys Targaryen and so I feel would be better discussed when I talk about the Starks and the Targaryens in the next video. So let's take a deeper look at Jaime and Cersei. The relationship between the siblings and lovers is fraught following disagreements over the threat of the White Walkers and helping Tyrion, Danny, and Jon to fight them. Now, barring exceptional circumstances, if I'm truthfully honest, it seems difficult to see either Cersei or Jaime ending the story sat on the Iron Throne. Let's start with Cersei first. Her rise to power in the show has been dependent on her ability to work with various powers and manipulate situations to suit her need. Her vision was always driven by a desire to see her children ruling the kingdom, but having lost all but possibly one unborn baby, her motives are more unclear than ever. In addition to this, she's struggling with issues with both of her brothers. Her hate for Tyrion was generally always there and has never been hidden, but having now potentially lost Jaime too, it seems difficult that she'll be able to take action to keep rule in King's Landing with a clear head and with certainty as she has shown previously. And this was evident in Season 7, when she showed a lack of decisiveness as Jaime chose to leave her side to support the coming war. In addition to this, she's also lost many critical figures in her life who might have given her leverage. This is none more evident than her not having her father, Tywin, at her side to provide strategic leadership and holding the family together. Without him, she's lost a fundamental figure in her life and the only one who was able to keep her disciplined and focus on the vision. 
or mission at hand. Then of course there's Jamie, who has joined the effort further up north. What's interesting in Jamie's circumstances, his growth over the course of the show has set him up to play a significant role in the show's final season. Starting out arrogant and selfish, he's shown through the show's progression a stark change of character after having been influenced most of all by Brienne of Tarth. Her dedication to her duties and honour as a knight has clearly had a profound impact on him, leaving him making decisions that wouldn't have been up for question in his past and more importantly, acknowledging his role for the greater need of all people of Westeros. He acknowledges and recognises the need to fight a war where the odds aren't favourable, despite knowing that his ability to fight has been severely weakened since he lost his fighting hand. He's shown more certainty with his decisions in Season 7 than I think he's previously showed at any other point since the series began. And this is critical, don't underestimate the importance of this change. He stood up to Cersei's will for the first time to follow his decision. He's chosen to do what's right and necessary for the greater good and has a clear vision on what his purpose is. This will be to fight the White Walkers, which will surely be a battle where the odds are against him. However, he and Brienne also play a critical role in this war, being holders of swords made from Valerian steel, one of the known materials that can actually kill White Walkers. Jaime isn't likely to end the show as the king, as it's never been his motivation, but his importance in the final season is likely to be large, as he's a soldier, a highly capable war strategist and a figure of great importance and value. Also, it wouldn't be too shocking if he's the one to finally be the one to bring about Cersei's end. He may love her, but he's shown that in times of conflict and needing to take action, he won't stop himself doing so. Now, there is a possibility I'm wrong about his character and he turns on those he's supporting. However, I feel it's unlikely and if he does, I can only say he's done a phenomenal job in duping people. Brienne will also surely be involved in the war knowing her relationship to the Starks, most notably her oath to protect Sansa. But again, we may discuss her role more next time. Finally, I want to briefly discuss the role of the Greyjoys in the final season. The house has been split, with Yara and Theon on one side, and Euron on the other side, wanting to kill them. Now the reason the Greyjoys are so important is that they're a naval unit that have the strength very few do. On a tactical level, this is vital in any war and it will be interesting to see what role they play either in supporting the fight against the White Walkers as Yara and Theon ally with Daenerys and Euron allies with Cersei. The question is how the scenario will play out, as Euron is unpredictable and willing to take actions which others might dispute, which could be a wild card that Cersei can use to her advantage. However, equally so, Euron is also a character who is very much in the game for himself. Just as he's allied to Cersei, there is just as much a possibility of him turning against her should the relationship not be of benefit to him. I think it's almost certain we won't see any of Yara, Theon or Euron ending up on the Iron Throne, but we'll surely see them battle out for leadership of their house, a war that in itself could play a pivotal role in the greater scope of things. And that's it for today's video. We've taken a look at the roles of the White Walkers, Cersei, Jaime, Brienne and the Greyjoys might play in the coming season, with possibly the biggest threat being the White Walkers and specifically the Night King. Next time we have part 2 of this mini-series, where we'll talk about some of the other major players yet to be discussed including the Starks, Daenerys, Tyrion and others who may play a large role, such as Sam or Melisandre. And in that part, you'll see my thoughts on who I think may end up on the most coveted throne in all of Westeros. Thanks for watching. As mentioned before, I'd love to know your thoughts on what you think about this video and whether it's something you'd like to see more of on the channel. Let me know in the comment section below.